Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast, the podcast and talk show where we have digital discussions in the worlds of sports, TV, film, pop culture, music, news, everything. Really, depending on the guests, we talk about it all. As always, I'm your host, Pro Otis. On social media, you know me as Petey Beats. My guest is a defenseman in the Ottawa Centers organization, the National Hockey League. We're speaking to Max Lajoie. Max, welcome to Pop Turnative, man. Thanks for having me. Excited no to be on. I've, we've been wanting to do this for a while, so I'm, ha- I'm yeah. happy we're able to get it done, man. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, a very quick question. I mean, you know, COVID-19 has made it, made sports very different and very difficult at times for you specifically as a pro athlete, what were kind of the biggest things that you had to kind of get used to? Was it kind of the training schedules and everything was basically off essentially? Yeah, I I would say training schedules for the summer. Like I said, like we have no idea when everything's going to start again. So we kind of have to figure out a way to manage when you're going to work out and when you're going to take breaks during the summer. Cause you know, usually right now we're starting the regular season. So, I mean, it's definitely weird not to know and training wise, it's, it's really weird, but at the same time, it gives us, gives me like a, a good break and get my body healed. Um, so just from like little injuries and stuff like that. So it's nice. You're a defenseman who, you know, you get drafted by the Ottawa centers. You, you make the team, you play, you go. And then, you know, last year you were up and down from the AHL and the NHL. You're a young defenseman that has a chance to play in the national hockey league at a young age. What have you noticed at being kind of like a 19, 20 year old, um, like in in the, in that age group, what have you noticed from the skill around the league being a young defenseman in the National Hockey League, Max? Uh, probably learned that everyone in that league ha- can do anything. Really, like it's um, it's crazy how much guys are good and guys know where everything is is going on. And uh, I found the difference between like the AHL and the NHL is that every player can make plays, like in the NHL. So. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's just more of a structured league. I mean, the AHL is more, there's more, I would say there's more hitting in the AHL and more run around. Um, but like I said, I, I, I love the NHL and obviously everyone wants to play there. Um, I hear it's yeah, just, it's, it's harder to play the, the AHL and the ECHL. I just hear yeah, like, that's, it's the hardest hockey to ever play. <laughs> yeah. I would say like, it's in a way easier to play in the NHL than it is the AHL just yeah. because everyone can make plays and you know it when everyone's going to be and all that kind of stuff. So I, I would say, yeah, it's, I know it doesn't sound normal to say, but it's definitely easier to play in the NHL than the AHL. One of your teammates and one of your really good friends, Drake Batherson had an unbelievable year last year um, in the AHL, went in the NHL a little bit, um, talking to some players around the AHL last year, asking them who was the best player in the American hockey league. Quite a few of them said Drake Batherson. Talk a little bit about kind of playing with a player like that and what he kind of brings to the table. Yeah, I mean he's he's tremendously skilled. I mean you you watch him play and it's he he makes plays out of nothing and it was just awesome. We had such a young young group of guys this year that you know had amazing years. Like you look at at him, Norris, Formanton, Brown, Schlappig, all those guys. You know, like Balsers. We we had so many good guys that it was so fun to play offense and you know like the power play and stuff like that it was just so easy and absolutely it was just you know, those guys made plays so it, was, it made it easier on on other guys and everyone looked better this year so it was awesome for you specifically what kind of defensemen do the ottawa centers have in max lejois what what kind of game do you bring to the table i think i bring a solid like two-way game um i can contribute offensively if i if they need me to mm-hmm. uh i can play on the power play uh just i think with my poise and stuff it it helps, um, and I I really pride myself on my defensive play, uh, just having a good stick and being able to close on guys, not giving them much. Um, and to be honest, I, I really like playing the penalty kill probably more than yeah. I pl- like playing the power play. Um, so I I mean, if they put me in those positions, I, I'm I'm very happy. Well, when you kind of came up, because I remember your first year in the National Hockey, you played for the Ottawa Senators. Last year, you were kind of up and down. Um, yeah. But when you came up, I definitely saw they used you a little bit on the PK. Yeah, yeah, they did. I was pretty happy about it. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I, there's something about just blocking shots and and stuff like that that I really love. So, absolutely. Um, another thing that I find is very 
interesting is, you know, the, like I said, no timetables for everything. Um, the NHL draft um, was a draft for the Ottawa Senators that people are going to remember for a while. Yeah, and a lot uh, of speci- Yeah, but, but specifically, um, how awesome was the Alex Trebek um, intro for, for Tim yeah. Stutzel getting drafted? That was, that was no. amazing. <laughs> He's gonna remember that forever. That's awesome. Like that's it's just legendary. Like it's 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 never been done, right? So it's it's pretty cool. Absolutely. So I believe, you know, you being from Calgary, um, you played your junior hockey um in the WHL. Yep. And um have you like have you kind of um because you're playing pro hockey right now, but I'm sure you kind of are in the loop a little bit about that league specifically. There's some good players that got drafted from the WHL in yeah. the NHL. Um, do you still think that the CHL, the WHL, the Q, the OHL um is kind of like the the like the the next step to the NHL? Like do you think that's a very good idea for development these days, Max? Yeah, I do. I mean, I went through it and I thought it was it was really good. Um, like I got, I didn't play as a 16. I got, I was the last cut um, possible. And that was probably the best thing for me, just for me personally. But mm-hmm. just those three years that I spent in, in Swift really, you know, gave me that confidence to think that like, Hey, like I can really do something out of my life with hockey. And um, but yeah, I thought it was a really good process. I mean, I skate with a bunch of junior guys. I, I skate with the, uh, neighbors i got drafted yeah. uh to st louis just the first the show. yeah so I, I i mean i skate with him and, and a couple other junior guys i got drafted and everyone that i talk to loves loves playing junior um obviously people go ncaa and that's it i mean i'm sure it's a really good route too um but yeah i mean it all depends your family too kind of influences you on on these it's these different choices. It, it's different kind of for every player right yeah depends exactly where they kind of are um yeah, yeah. absolutely um, I've been asking a lot of the players that got drafted in the National Hockey League of this. You know, I um, I, I spoke to Igor Sokolov, who got drafted by Cape, uh, by Senators, by the Ottawa Senators, on um, plays for Cape Breton. Um, I mean, I asked them all like, if they were kind of watching the NHL playoffs, and a lot of them said yes. And um, one thing that I'm, I'm realizing, which is insane, is how kind of hard the game of hockey has become. Like, it just seems like... Like, it just seems so difficult. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, and especially, like, the playoffs is crazy because, like, they played so many games in so many, like, not a lot of days. It's, it was crazy because they had, like, back-to-backs in the Stanley Cup finals. Like, that's, that's unheard of. Like, you <laughs> yeah. never, never do that. So, I mean, back-to-backs are hard enough already. And I can't even imagine, like, in playoffs and Stanley Cup final. Like, that's, that's crazy to me. Like, I mean, it's good for them. Like, they, it was awesome to watch and. Is a is a great playoffs. Yeah, you know, I, I said before I was gonna ask you like some tough questions. I've been throwing some easy questions. I'll ask you one <laughs> tough question. All right, Sounds Max. Good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> your first year in the NHL, you make the Ottawa Senators. Your second yeah. year, you don't make the Ottawa Senators. You go down to the AHL. What do you need to do to play in the National Hockey League? Um, I think I got to be better at um my defensive zone. I mean, that was one of the things uh, they want from me, um, just personally. They they want me to be able to close on guys and be harder on guys, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, that last year, that, that was tough for me, obviously getting to camp and then getting sent down. Um, kind of confidence went down a bit. Um, but at the same time, I kind of realized what I had to do more of to be able to, to play in the NHL. Um, cause you gotta be one thing that's the biggest thing is consistency, right? Um, it's, it's tough to bring your A game every single night. And e- even if you don't have it, you still have to be, be good and do everything right. So, I mean, it's, it's really about consistency for me and being able to do the things that they, they want me to work on that defensive zone and just being harder on guys. Absolutely. Your job on the ice as a professional hockey player is obviously to play and help your team win. But one thing I feel like that does that kind of doesn't go unnoticed is the fact that, you know, whether it's community events, um, speaking to the press, speaking to fans, there's more kind of jobs for a professional hockey player rather than yeah. kind of playing on the ice. Have you ever thought about that? Yeah, I mean, we we always get the chance during the year to do stuff like that. It's it's always nice. It's always I remember I think it was last year, the year before I went to we went to the children's hospital in Ottawa, uh, the Chio, and you know we did a lot of stuff in Belleville too with with the community. So 
that stuff's really important. I mean, it's just as important as playing hockey. So, um, you know, these, these kids look up to us, so it's nice to, to give back a little bit. No, absolutely. Um, talking a lot about ho- a lot of hockey right now, because like, do you find that still kind of a misconception though about like hockey players? Like all they do is eat, breathe, sleep hockey. I mean, you guys have lives besides hockey, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, we do. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think people think that's all we do, but everyone has their their own little thing. Um, You know, I love playing golf and I love collecting shoes. Collecting shoes is like my, I guess, my hobby. Have Um, you watched Sneakerheads on Netflix yet? Oh, yeah. I I watch all all of it. Um, But yeah, no, I'm a a huge shoe guy. I probably have around 50, 60 pairs of shoes. Uh, So yeah, I do that a lot during the year. If we go different places and stuff, I... I try and look t- to to go to these stores that are in different cities and Man. see what they got. So. Yeah, that that must be. Yeah, that's yep. a good especially yeah. for a shoe collector. Eh? Being an yeah. be the travel over cities. Exactly. Yeah, especially when I was in Ottawa because we would go to like L.A. and New York yeah. and and those kind of spots. So obviously, they have pretty cool sneaker shops. So who's on oh. your who's on your crew for the shoe shopping crew? Oh, we got a few guys actually. We got uh, well, I mean, Formington is one. Batherson is uh, Colin White, Shabbat so you guys, as well. You go, these are the guys who go shopping. Yeah, I so, usually yeah. go. Du, like Duclair is one. Um, so yeah, it's it's pretty fun to have like guys on the team that are also really interested in it. Um, so it's it was fun definitely going to these these stores with them. I did an Instagram live over quarantine with Thomas Shabbat, and it was one of the most talked talked about Instagram lives. Like people keep talking about it because he talked <laughs> about his love for the movie Home Alone. We talked about that for a while. Yeah. Um, what are some of your kind of favorite TV shows and some favorite movies, Max? Uh, favorite TV show right now is Grey's Anatomy. I've been watching that. I started that, but I would say my favorite TV show ever is probably The Office or Friends. Yep. Um, the Office. I just I love the dry humor. It's it's one of my favorite shows for sure. I think one of the highlights for my show is because I don't just interview like like athletes. Is yep. I interviewed Melora Hardin who plays Jan. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's pretty That's cool. Sweet. Like yeah. yeah, no, I I interviewed her. It was pretty awesome. We How talked was that? About, yeah, it was good, man. It was good. Yeah. It was, we we talked about like the uh, the cocktail scene, the cocktail yeah. party scene, <laughs> and the dinner party scene. Yeah, and uh, no, it was really cool. Um, no, it, it's it's crazy because like I started the show, you know, like like if people who follow Pop Turner, they know it's like podcast, website, pop culture, sports, lifestyle. Yeah. So I kind of want to talk about every, everyone. I want to talk to everyone. I want to talk about everything. Everything, so, yeah. It's pretty crazy though. Like I'm interviewing people from like some of my favorite movies and shows yeah, that I grew up watching. Cool. Yeah. And like I interview, like you remember Home Alone? Yeah. So there's a scene, I haven't posted it yet, but like there's a scene where she's checking in from the airport calling or, um, the, the cops to, to find yeah. out like what's going on with her, with her son. And the guy who answers the phone larry hankin who's also on friends okay. i interviewed him on my show and he really? talked about like filming that scene with the donut and everything and it's just like it's it, yeah no, it's, that's it's awesome crazy yeah no it's it's really cool um yeah no absolutely it's 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 a fun time as well um no but absolutely max this was awesome to, to chat with you about this yeah time, no, thank this you so is much great. we can definitely do it again for sure absolutely no for sure we, yeah we should do uh man the, sh- the shoe that that's really cool though like I, yeah I'll, uh, maybe next time we can, i can uh set some up and uh, i can show you all all the shoes yeah. i got that'd be no, sweet. absolutely that'd be really really cool um, yeah no for sure so i mean you like in terms of where people can follow you on social media you did you do have an instagram yeah i do have an instagram i actually deleted it though off mm-hmm. of my phone just the app i haven't been on it for almost three weeks now just kind of I watched this documentary on on Netflix. It was yes. called The Social Dilemma, uh, <laughs> and uh, it kind of kind of freaked me out. So I was just, uh, so yeah. So the I haven't people, had it on my phone. You're not the only one that did that, though. I hope you know, like a lot of I know. people did that. Yeah, I know. I got some buddies that did it too. So I mean, yeah, I think that that documentary just kind of freaked me out a bit. So I kind of deleted a couple of things off my phone. <laughs> Netflix is just doing that, people. Eh? They launch Contagion yeah, during exactly. the peak it's of the pandemic. The first time, yeah. It's... <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Seriously, man, thank you so much. And, you know, yeah, I thanks. wish you all the best awesome. in this upcoming year. You know, I know it's it's a lot of unknowns, but uh, you're a good hockey player. You're you're also a good guy. So I wish you all the best, man. Well, thanks. I appreciate it. It was Absolutely. awesome. No, for sure. Well, this has been Pop Turn of YouTube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. And until next time, it says Max Lajoie. 
I'm Petey Beats, signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.